Welcome Magnus here. If you like to talk about cameras then definitely consider subscribing because you'll get more of that from me as well as tips and tricks on what you can do with these cameras in terms for video, not so much photos. <laughs> so you saw the title GH6 and why I would never think of getting it no matter what the video specs are. And this is not me being a hater of micro four thirds because I have a GH5. GH5 has been a camera that I've owned since day one. I bought this on launch and I even actually made a couple of videos on why I wasn't going to get it and then I got it anyway. So what am I doing here again? Like, am I saying I'm not going to get the GH6 and then I get it anyway? No, 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 definitely not. This time there's no chance that I'll get the GH6. I don't care if it has improved autofocus. I don't care if it has all these other top-notch features I hear it's gonna do like five point something K recording no matter what excellent features we would have it's basically because of my experience with the GH5 and using the GH5 yes I own more than one micro four thirds mount system I own the GH5 and I own the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and to say that my dislike or my kind of like just unhappiness with this camera would be due to the autofocus is is you'd be wrong it's not the case the autofocus actually didn't turn me off to this camera and quite honestly i do have a number of other cameras that i record with that would you know i would pick up them before i pick up the gh5 but lord knows i also tried to give the gh5 a chance and the main reason that i couldn't give this camera a chance was because of the image quality the image quality of the GH5 was just something that I subjectively didn't like. Now, the, the dynamic range is pretty good on this camera, and the colors that you get out of this camera when done right are pretty good. But unfortunately, there's just something about the GH5 and Panasonic image in general, which I personally found to just remind me of video and not so much like almost like a cinematic, I don't even think that's even appropriate to say, right? But like a cinematic look before I start grading. And there is a camera that I bought afterwards, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, that has the same sensor size that when I look at the image that that camera produces, even though it has no continuous autofocus, this camera, the GH5, at least had an attempt at continuous autofocus, but the black magic, none whatsoever. You just set you set your focus at the beginning, you start recording, and then everything's manual from there. I could put up with that a lot more than I could put up with the GH5 and everything that this camera would give you when you record. Now, this thing has a ton of features. The menu system I was never really a fan of either, because like the way they broke up this menu system and how it has like two like different camera recording menu systems and then a bunch of different icons when you're looking to change something it was somewhat of a mess to try to change it and i can never really memorize this menu system and i've owned it like i said since it launched in 2017 i believe just something like that especially when i'm on the go and I gotta work on the fly, it just really never helped. My recording scenario where, as with like one of my Canons or the, even the Black Magic, the menus are just, I just can change what I need to change quickly without having to dig through the menus. But like, like I said, it's just the image. Like check out this video that I just recorded where I was actually taking my R5 out of this little lunchbox here because I, I was keeping it cold to see how much I can get in 8K recording. But the image itself that this camera produces, I, I'm just not too much of a fan of. And I have used focal reducers. I do have the Viltrox focal reducer here, and then I have a Metabones as well. So I've got one from each company so and i've used them with the panasonic but it's the look and that's what really matters and it's i don't attribute that as a fault of the smaller sensor because like i said black magic's image is my favorite amongst all cameras and it's not full frame right it's a four-third sensor beats the canon r5 beats the 5d mark IV, which i'm recording with right now beats the panasonic of course it beats even my samsung nx1 it's just my favorite image and Sony, I've seen Sony footage and it beats Sony footage as well, at least right off the box. Because when you start grading, of course, you can make 
maybe any one of these cameras look amazing. Just like you can make GH5 look amazing, but it never took away from the fact that I felt like it just looked like video. You know, it's, it's hard to explain, but there's a difference to me between video look and filmic look. And right off the box, this GH5 reminds me of a video look. So why haven't I sold it? Well, the thing is, the GH5 does have its uses that I find very useful. One of the reasons is the fact that it has dual card slots, okay? And these dual SD card slots, I can actually hot swap while recording and the camera won't shut off on me while I'm recording. And the other thing is the fact that it has no record limit. So that in itself, while never overheating for recording up to 4K at 60 frames per second, is so convenient because if I need to record long form sessions, I can use a GH5 manual focus only and get what I need. I can also do that with the black magic, but if I need more than one camera, I have more than one camera without having to spend extra money with the Panasonic GH5. And I can have two cameras that don't stop on me after 30 minutes. Canon's big flaw is that I'm sorry, but they should have removed that for their regular DSLR and mirrorless cameras or their hybrid cameras because their cinema line doesn't have that problem but seriously come on like i said it does have benefits but all in all i would not get the gh6 even if they improve the sensor i'm already i'm already sold off of panasonic like i'm sorry panasonic it's just that image and and throw anything you want out of it you you lost me as a customer so why haven't i sold the camera this thing is like new it's my least used camera so quite honestly the shutter count is practically probably less than a thousand so i haven't taken many if any pictures on it and the videos that i've recorded from it not really that many to be honest it's it's mostly been my other cameras so this thing is i mean i could practically sell it like as new it's got a little bit of like a smudge on this side i don't know where that came from probably probably something that got dirty but i could just wipe that off and it'd still be good so but yeah i won't sell it because it still has its uses and it's those like long recording format uses but other than that for low light no way for any type of project professional project that i need to get like a really good look it's not going to be the gh5 it'll be my other cameras it predominantly would be my r5 and it predominantly would be my black magic cinema camera which is in the back those i would go to but why don't i have like a red komodo or something like a real cinema camera why not get a real cinema camera why are you getting all these hybrid cameras and not getting real cinema cost that's why i got the black magic because black magic cost kept its price down and i got all of these different cameras allow me the ability to get extra features and adapt my features, but still keep the price low. And I've got many cameras, yes, but they can all do it and I can switch it for a lot less money than it would be to upgrade your cinema camera. Because when you've got a cinema camera that can give you 16 plus stops of dynamic range, but limits your recording to 1080p and you spent $15,000 on it or $20,000, and then it upgrades to like 4K, so you get... 4k but now 8k cameras come out now you got to spend another forty thousand dollars just to get this high resolution but when you do that with these mirrorless cameras it's a lot easier to justify three four thousand dollars especially for the projects that i do rather than fifteen or twenty thousand dollars a pop when you're in one of those situations and you'd only get one camera for that much money yes the fx3 r5c are making that difference minimal so i'm kind of liking that i might actually jump into a cinema camera i'm looking at the c70 to be totally honest but it's still whatever i don't know i've rambled on too much this thing is going back on the shelf because that's where it sits for most of the time unless i can think of an excuse to use it for a long form recording session and that's about it gh6 sorry you won't sell even if you have 8k at 120 frames per second i'm not buying Anyway, let me know what you guys think of the upcoming GH6 if it gets announced shortly, which we believe it, it will. And I've got a ton of other GH6 videos where I speculate on it, but that's my opinion. Let me know yours in the comments down below. And as always, you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later.